The Armenians are an ancient people who have existed since before the first century CE. Armenia has gained and lost a tremendous amount of territory throughout its long and turbulent history. Boundaries of the past have extended from that of the present day Republic of Armenia and through most of modern day Turkey. Armenia was the first nation to adopt Christianity as a state religion in 301 CE. This early Christian identity has greatly influenced Armenian culture, setting it apart from most of its neighboring peoples. The Armenians were second class citizens, and while they were granted some freedoms, including the ability to practice Christianity, they were faced with extra taxes and discriminatory laws, extending to their participation in the justice system, government, and their sylvan property rights. By the mid-1800s, as the idea of constitutionalism swept through Europe, some Armenians began to demand more rights. Organized groups of intellectuals protested the discriminatory laws, seeking reform from the government. Massacres of the Armenians began in the late 19th century under Abdul Hamid II, the last of the Ottoman sultans actually to rule the empire. The worst massacres during this time occurred from 1894 to 1896 after attacks protests by Armenians. They are now known as the Hamidian massacres and some believe represented a foreshadowing of the genocide to come. During the Hamidian massacres, 100,000 to 300,000 Armenians were killed in towns and villages throughout the areas of the Ottoman Empire. Thousands fled and found refuge in Europe and the U.S. Some who stayed converted to Islam in order to save their own lives. After 1909, an extreme nationalist political movement promoting a policy of pan-Turkism, or Turkey for the Turks, gained backing from Turkish populations throughout the Ottoman Empire. In addition, the Ottoman Empire, now known as the Sick Man of Europe, was weakened by the loss of its lands in southeastern Europe in the Balkan Wars of 1912-1913. Russia, one of the Ottoman Empire's greatest enemies, was threatening the security of the Ottoman borders and controlled parts of the eastern edge of the Ottoman Empire, populated largely by Armenians. Because the Russians had advocated for Armenian reforms in the past, and because Armenians served in the Russian army, the Ottoman government was concerned that Ottoman Armenians might commit traitorous acts. This fear helped to fuel Turkish public sentiment against Armenians. During World War I, the Ottoman Empire was badly defeated by Russia in a campaign in the winter of 1914 and 1915, and the government then made the Armenian community a scapegoat for the military losses that had occurred. By the spring of 1915, leaders of the ruling party, the CUP, seized the opportunity of a world preoccupied by war to erase the Armenian presence from all Ottoman lands. The CUP was a triumvirate led by Mehmet Talat, Ismail Enver, and Ahmed Jemal. Beginning on April 24, 1915, now commemorated as the beginning of the Armenian Genocide, Armenian civil leaders, intellectuals, doctors, businessmen, and artists were rounded up and killed. Once these leaders of the Armenian communities were killed, the genocide plan was put into motion throughout the empire. These measures were part of the genocidal program secretly adopted by the CUP and implemented under the cover of war. Convoys consisting of tens of thousands, including men, women, and children, were driven hundreds of miles toward the Syrian desert. The deportations were disguised as a resettlement program. The brutal treatment of the deportees, most of whom were made to walk to their destinations, made it apparent that the deportations were mainly intended as death marches. The genocidal intent of the CUP measures was also evidenced by the mass killings that accompanied the deportations. Earlier, Armenian soldiers and the Ottoman forces had been disarmed and either worked to death in labor battalions or outright executed in small batches. With the elimination of the able-bodied men from the Armenian population, the deportations proceeded with little resistance. The convoys were frequently attacked by bands of killers specifically organized for the purpose of slaughtering the Armenians. As its instrument of extermination, the government had authorized the formation of gangs of butchers, mostly convicts released from prison, expressly enlisted in the units of the so-called special organization. They raped, stole, and often used swords to hack their victims to death. Younger Armenian women were sometimes kidnapped and sold into bondage in Turkish homes. Their churches were destroyed. Countless other Armenians were hanged, shot, even burned to death during the Turks' murderous rampage. Armenian babies were thrown against walls, and older children were poisoned to death. The relatively small number of Armenians who survived the marches and reached the northern Syria were rounded up in neglected camps and then dispatched into the desert to die. Within months, the Euphrates and Tigris rivers became clotted with the bodies of Armenian women and children. 
polluting the water supply for those who had not yet perished. Dysentery and other diseases were rampant, and those who managed to survive the march found themselves in concentration camps. By 1918, most of the Armenians who had resided in the historic land were dead or in the diaspora. By 1923, a 3,000-year-old civilization virtually ceased to exist. One and a half million Armenians, more than half of the Armenian population on its historic homeland, were dead, and the Armenian community and personal properties were lost, appropriated by the government, stolen by others, or deliberately destroyed. The survival of the few Armenians, in large part, is credited not to acts of resistance, but to the humanitarian intervention led by American Ambassador Henry Morgenthau. Although the Allied powers expressly warned the Ottoman government about its policy of genocide, ultimately it was through Morgenthau's efforts that the plight of the Armenians was publicized in the U.S. The U.S. Congress authorized the formation of a relief committee which raised funds to feed the starving Armenians. Near East Relief, as the committee was eventually known, headed a large-scale effort to re rehabilitate the survivors who were mostly left in their places of deportation. By setting up refugee camps, orphanages, medical clinics, and educational facilities, Near East Relief rescued the surviving Armenian population. The new Turkish Republic, founded in 1923, began an official policy of denying the genocide ever took place, a denial which the current Turkish government continues to this day. Among a series of actions enacted to counter Armenian genocide recognition and education, the government even passed a law in 2004, known as Article 305, which makes it a criminal offense punishable by up to 10 years in prison to discuss the Armenian genocide. Ragib Zarakalu had a similar experience when he and his wife published the book The Armenians, A History of the Genocide by Yves Ternon in the early 1990s. It was the first book to be published in Turkey that openly acknowledged the events of 1915 as genocide. We decided to publish uh, books about Armenian genocide. And after published that book, we were attacked. We had uh, threats. Uh, and uh, in 1994, we had a bomb attack. Our uh, editorial office finished because of the bomb attack. And we lost all our archives. And uh, my wife, I had two year uh, prison sentence because uh, she published Eternal book. Ragib Zarakalu and his late wife have been taken to trial over 40 times and even imprisoned for the books they published, most of which dealt with the Armenian genocide or other human rights issues. April 2003, the Ministry of National Education of the Republic of Turkey issued a directive to all schools that they have to organize teaching to show that the Armenian genocide and its claims that such things occurred were groundless, that they never occurred. In other words, official denial by the state taught as part of the curriculum in the national schools of Turkey. Imagine for a moment the history books of the Western world being printed without having the story of World War I in there. Here is a significant country in our world spending an enormous amount of its money, of its resources, on one subject. Don't you mention the Armenian Genocide. Despite the fact that the Armenian Genocide is one of the least reported and least documented events in human history, Armenians annually commemorate April 24th as a day to remember the victims of the century's first genocide.